I'm back with another studio catch-up. It's now March 2023. I'm a little late actually putting this out. I was going to do it last week but I had a really bad stomach ache and I just wasn't feeling well. I didn't really get much at all done last week but thankfully I am feeling totally back to normal and I'm really grateful about that. So what's been happening? Well I got a new camera and you can't see it at the moment because I'm actually filming with it. I'm looking at the screen and I look really bright so I'm not really sure if it's just the screen is really bright because I do still have it on automatic settings. I haven't fully read the manual yet to figure out where everything is but I'll give you a little look at the camera. I just took some footage of it with my other camera so you can check that out now. Here it is, a Leica V-Lux 5. I've always wanted to have a Leica camera, but their earlier models were just prohibitively expensive. They've come out with some more affordable models, and yes, I know there is a Panasonic equivalent to this particular camera, but I had to have it in a Leica, and I'm so glad I got this one. It is absolutely beautiful. It's what they call a bridging camera, which is kind of in between a compact camera and a DSLR or a mirrorless camera as they tend to be these days. I really wanted it for the zoom range. Check that out. It's a 25 to 400 millimeter. And I just want a camera that does everything. I don't want to have to change lenses. I've done that for many years and I'm totally over it. One camera with a built-in lens. Super easy to carry, much lighter than a DSLR, but still pretty chunky. I absolutely love it. It has an articulating screen so I can see myself when I'm filming and it films in 4K, so it pretty much does everything. It's so awesome, yay. <laughs> I've been meaning to get a new camera for a long time like around three years or so and I actually traded in my professional photography gear about three years ago literally a week before the first lockdown and I was going to trade it in get the money and then look around to buy something else but during lockdowns it didn't really seem to matter and I have not done much photography at all in the last three years but I really did want to get something for our trip to Greece I've been using this little guy here this is actually a really great camera and I've enjoyed using it it's excellent for filming and it takes some pretty decent photos as well it just doesn't have the zoom length that I wanted I can't remember I might post it up here what the zoom length is I'll have to look it up online because I'm totally blanking whereas this one that I'm filming with now has a lovely range of 24 to 400 mil and it is so awesome for zooming in on tiny things I spent some time on the weekend actually taking some photos it was so great to just use a camera for photography again Again, it's been so long because I'm really happy with the camera and the quality of it is astonishingly good. I just can't get over how amazing camera technology is. So let's take a look at some of these pictures. This is the very first photo I took with the camera. No editing whatsoever. I just love the richness of the blacks and the colors. Of course I had to take photographs of my cats. These are taken at full zoom so I was standing quite a distance back. But I just love how these turned out. I edited these just a bit in Photoshop. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to zoom, here are some examples. This photo is taken at the widest angle 25 millimeters and here is a full zoom of 400 millimeters standing in the same spot. I was able to get a picture of the birds on top of the tree in the distance. Here's another photo taken at 25 mil which is the widest angle this camera does. It's standing in the same spot zoomed in at 400 mil. So it's a bit like looking through a pair of binoculars. So it means there's a huge variety of possibilities from nice landscape shots into close up more detailed photos. And it is particularly excellent for wildlife which are often far away and hard to photograph. It's particularly great for birds which usually won't let you near them so you can stand from a fair distance away and get decent close up photos. I'm a bit rusty when it comes to bird photography so I hope to do a bit more and remember how to be a photographer. <laughs> this one started flying away the instant I took the photo so this was a bit of a fluke but I really like it. And these cockatoos were way up in the tree. I could hardly see them but the camera could. I also really love taking photos of flowers and this Leica camera is perfect for it. The richness of the colors is just wonderful and most of this was just shot in camera although I did edit a few of these pictures just to increase their vibrance a little bit. I think this is probably the brightest one I did. Because I also love painting flowers I really enjoyed taking my own reference photos that I can use for whatever purpose and never have to worry about copyright. These photos were taken at the Tyndale Gardens and the Dandenong Ranges just outside of Melbourne. 
A lot of hydrangeas were blooming at the moment and all of these really pretty white flowers. Fuchsias. So many gorgeous colours and floral varieties. I had such a great time. This is actually a cropped image of a much larger one, but I just really like it. This one was one of my favourites, just with the sunlight shining behind it. These are my absolute favourite gardens. And I hadn't been there for so long, I was really happy just to wander around them and take random photos. These flowers were up against a greenhouse netting. And it was such a gorgeous day, with lots of bright sunlight which was giving a high contrast of light and shadow. I am so happy with this camera, I'm really glad I have it. And I can't wait to use it more in the future. Let me know what you think. And here was a tadpole that is almost a frog. A frog pole! And I was able to zoom right in on it. So I'm really excited to take this camera on our holiday to Greece. I think it's going to be wonderful. And I probably will have this little guy as a backup too because it's really light and I can stick it in a small bag if we go to the beach or something like that. I always have more than one camera just in case something fails. So what else has been happening? Not really that much to be perfectly honest with you. Although I do have a little bit of a follow-up on a gouache palette that I have that I filled up and I made a video on it quite a few months ago now. Miranda Watson of Alkali Creek Art also has the same palette and it's one of those airtight ones where you can put the paint in and then it stays fresh and wet inside the palette so it doesn't dry out. All well and good except that she had a video where she showed her palette with a healthy crop of mold on top and mine did exactly the same thing but much much worse because we're in summer over here and it just went totally ballistic. I've actually had to clean the entire palette out because it was all the way through, there was no saving the paint, I just decided to dig it all out and chuck it away. It was devastating, I hate losing paint like that and gouache isn't exactly cheap, although I'm glad it was the Art Spectrum gouache and not the more expensive Holbein gouache. So I am too scared to use this again for now, I've still got my little thing on top but it's water damaged as well and uh, it was a total disaster. I'm so disappointed. I think actually the best thing to do with this palette is to use it only for a few days. So maybe just put a small amount of gouache in there, use it up over the couple of days that you're going to do your project and then it kind of needs to be cleaned out or left open and the gouache needs to dry because once mold gets in there it's never coming out but the spores will basically be all the way through and then it will just keep growing mold and that is just nasty. So yeah, I think I'm giving up on airtight palettes for now. That's about all of the exciting news that I have for this month, which isn't very much to be perfectly honest. This trip to Greece is starting to just come up really quickly. It's less than two months now and I'm trying really hard not to stress out about it, but I am a little bit. I'm not gonna lie, traveling always causes anxiety and it's gonna be a really long flight. It's 21 hours to get there and 19 hours I think to come back. It's a bit faster because of the winds, but ugh, it's gonna be such a long flight and I'm not looking forward to it. Anyway, I'm gonna worry about that later on. So if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate a thumbs up. It helps out the channel so much and if you'd like to click the subscribe button, it's totally free. It just means that you can see my videos pop up in your feed when I release them. And I've got a couple of other videos up here if you want to check those out too. I will see you all again really soon in my next video. I hope you're having a great day out there. Swatch you later. Bye!